All right, welcome everybody to week seven, and we're talking about the Friday, Monday, Wednesday program design review. This is a 25 seconds on, 10 seconds off, three times around the room with a optional six station if you need it. Um, a suggestion that I had, we were talking about something cool for the kids camp this week, and it's just a variation that you could do in your energy lineup. I want to keep these videos short, so I'll we have a little bit of artistic interpretation rather than demonstration for you today. But what you could do, uh, as many times we've done like a mirror drill, uh, you can you know have your normal energy lineup and then you could challenge them in the end to like, okay, guys, here's what we're going to do. And uh, the communication drill that we've done at the youth camp is just having people count to three. And so like, you know, you give them a few seconds to practice count to three. Okay, now I want you to replace the number one with a squat. Right. And so then, OK, boom, they maybe they replace it with that. All right. I want you to replace the number two with a lunch or a burpee, you know, whatever you want to do. And before you know it, they're kind of going back and forth, just counting to three as part of their fun finisher. But it's also an exercise in neuroplasticity. Right. So by the time it's over, you've replaced all three numbers with an exercise and they've gone back and forth for whatever time you've allotted. So just something to kind of make it fun. Uh, typically, what it is, is more so like an icebreaker in a room where um, I say one, you say two, I say three. Uh, now you're saying one where before I was saying one, so it gets a little confusing. Then you say, okay, we're gonna replace one with a stomp. We're gonna replace two with a clap. We're gonna replace three with a snap of the fingers. And before you know it, it's all nonverbal communication. So uh, hopefully you wrap your mind around that. If you don't, <laughs> just do whatever you wanna do. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Um, we're going to go from left to right with this one. And uh, I've just highlighted this orange. Remember, here's what's going on. Yellow highlights, uh, they're meant to give you a purpose at each station. So that way you know uh, how you can be engaging, be entertaining. If we highlight something in orange, it's just an exercise consideration based on equipment or some other sort of limitation. Uh, if we highlight it in green, it may be where you want to start. So the reason the dumbbell lateral raise with a bicep curl is highlighted in orange is that you can lateral raise probably a little bit less than you can curl unless you really bend your elbows. So uh, the consideration might be to challenge them to do lateral raises the first time around or bicep curls the next time around if there's some sort of disparity. So then that way they get good work in both. Uh, but, you know, they can also really bend their elbows and just do it like this and then do the bicep curl, right? So if they're way out here, I think that's a lighter weight than what they curl. All right, power band long jump. Uh, teach the measurement of power, which is, you know, you should be able to jump the distance of your body, right? So that way you're, you as a coach are giving them a goal. Uh, maybe you can lay down next to them, not like where they're going to jump over you like Evil Knievel style, but, you know, you can give them a little measurement there if you wanted to. Uh, kettlebell, single arm, alternating swing, you know, of course, we've got the hip swing song uh, by Savage. Um, and there's so much you can do with a kettlebell swing, right? Uh, teaching like the thumbs to bum, the hands are hooks, the arms are ropes. Uh, you want to make sure that all the movement of the kettlebell comes from the hips. Um, you know, you don't want to see a kettlebell that's getting too high or they need a heavier weight. So those are things to think about with a kettlebell swing. Then you have your vert ball double slam. Challenge the pace. Uh, the double slam here is a slam to the floor and a slam to the wall as shown in the video by Cam. So, uh, this is a balls to the wall type exercise, right? That's a song you can put on your fun list. Shuffling that, that one to the top, balls to the wall. All right, low to high plank with a T stabilization. Of course, it's all about core engagement. And at the top of this movement, the shoulders should be stacked, right? So uh, making sure the core is engaged and they're getting all the way through that movement. Also a great opportunity for a little high five for those as they rotate through. All right, then as you get over here for the second circuit around the room, and uh, that is the uh, dumbbell farmer march. Okay, so you're carrying your dumbbells, you got your high knees. So this is all about posture, knee height. Um, I did put sexy on there. Um, and uh, you know, that's of course that song, if you wanna play that, that's always a little fun thing when people are doing the farmer's walks. Then uh, the power band, uh, jump squat with a row. Uh, that's Van Halen jump or any other jump song that you wanna play there. Mm -hmm. um, you can also, you know, something else I'll just throw in here right now. Uh, we we're talking about this yesterday with our youth camp, but teach to land soft. 
left, right? You know, we want people to have healthy joints for as long as they possibly can. And so how they land uh, really, really makes an impact. <laughs> uh, kettlebell, double overhead press, challenge the weight. Consider even spotting on the forearms, you know, come along and make sure somebody's got a good weight that they need a spot with, right? Spot on forearms there. All right. Then um, next one, we got the vert ball alternating uh, rotational slams. Uh, that is one where you're standing in front of the wall and you're from one side of your hip to the other rotating into the wall, right? So you're kind of squaring up, but you have that rotation going back and forth. So once again, it is balls to the wall. In fact, that is the whole theme of this column. Uh, so I think that's kind of comical when they keep going back over there for your next demonstration and it's balls to the wall, right? So uh, you kind of keep getting everybody with that song. Uh, the core scissor via, okay? So you're doing the scissor motion while being up. Of course, you can uh, have, do it one leg at a time, you know, alternating, which feet are on the ground. When people have LBP, lower back pain, it's not good to have both feet elevated at the same time. So that's something that you may want to teach or at least uh, cue people for uh, because we're not looking to have people have a flare up. We want to keep them in the game. And then for round three is the uh, anti-rotation because it's a dumbbell push up with a renegade row. So even though we're rowing, it's really focused on the anti-row, which is the anti-rotation of the hips and the towel on the lower lumbar. Uh, when you can uh, measure how much they're rotating, right? If they rotate too much, it falls off. So that's kind of a way that you can make someone feel as if you're with them, even though you're still touring the rest of the room. If I was going to give anything a highlight, I'd probably give this one a highlight because when I do those types of things, I want to start there because now they still feel my presence with them while I'm going around making it to as many other places as I can in 25 seconds. Um <laughs> The power band, low to high crossover. So you're going from low, coming up high. I said, uh, teach the pinkies. What's going on here is uh, last week we had a incline press where we dropped our hips down. We're on the stability ball and we're pressing. That one was about bringing your thumbs together. And you'll notice if you do this while you're listening or watching this video, that bringing the thumbs together makes you just feel a little bit more of a turn at the top of your chest. Well, you'll notice if you bring your pinkies together, you'll feel a little bit more of a turn at the bottom of your chest, right? And so what we want to express to them as they're doing this from low to high is that they're getting a lower chest, lower pec emphasis, right? You know, so bring the pink, uh, pinkies together to make them feel that emphasis. Then you have, uh, what was that? Wonder Woman. Oh, Wonder Woman, right? Oh, yeah, right, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonder Woman. Yeah, so there's also... Also the Wonder Woman, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, kettlebell, lateral walking squat. So it's a hip opener. Um, a, a good deep squat like that, like what's done with the kettlebell goblet, uh, where, you know, you can hold that to the front and, you know, you can get your elbows down deep, you know, touching your thighs. Uh, the opening of the hips is very healthy for the back. Uh, so uh, again, another point on healthy backs, I guess I speak about the things that are closest to me, <laughs> but guess what? <laughs> I'm a good representation of the majority of your population. So <laughs> listen up, you want to teach them to get low and get low with good form. I wouldn't, you know, if it takes it, you know, even though it's walking, you know, you could even still set up the pylons, right? Have them step and, you know, get on there, you know, to make sure they sink deep into their hips. So uh, it could be a mixture of both, but either way, just make sure that they're sinking deep into those hips with good form. Then uh, the vert ball V up slam. So now you're laying down on the floor, but you're still sitting up and once again, going balls to the wall. And then you got a core C sit. So you're sitting upright, like as if you're about to do a Russian twist, but instead you're doing a leg lift. Uh, core engagement uh, ways to make sure that you're getting that core engagement is um, punch them in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> If it's Cindy, she's always like, oh, you got it right. Or Jeremy, you know, uh, Jeremy, I hope uh, kids are feeling better. He would be on the call this week if uh, if he didn't have a couple little ones that were sick. But um, whatever, you you just want to teach people core engagement, right? You know, so it's like pull your belly button to your spine, feel your core engage. It's all about mind-muscle connection. Uh, as we've learned with a lot of this eccentric movement, if we can just get people to really focus on the muscle that they're working, they're going to get so much more out of it. And uh, the core is all about bracing, right? So teach them to brace. 
Then uh, the Cupid Shuffle, Valentine's Day. We all know that. And there's lots of uh, things I've seen uh, done to enhance the Cupid Shuffle, such as throwing a burpee in as you do your quarter turn. Uh, for those that it's appropriate, um, you know, people double up their band sometime. Uh, for me, I don't even use a band. That, that kind of irritates my back, you know. So uh, since I've told you that, you don't have to call anybody out if they're not using one because maybe it irritates theirs too, you know. I'll tell you, I feel the peer pressure. Sometimes I'm not using one. And then the people that are in the group that where I'm leading, they're like, Travis, aren't you going to put on a band? And I'm like, oh, damn it. I guess I'm going to rather than talk about my limitations. All right. So <laughs> anyway, that's the uh, Friday, Monday, Wednesday program design review. This is highlighted in blue because Jeremy is now sending out a word of the week, which we got. Uh, uh, I forget. Well, it came from Ithaca this week and uh, it's going to be on your screen, but also just make sure that you're, Getting people, uh, <laughs> getting people inspired, right? All right, there it is.